The World Health Organization currently ranks depression as the number one cause of loss of productivity in the world. There are treatments for depression, including antidepressants, but antidepressants don't work for everyone. Those individuals that don't respond are the ones that are classified as treatment resistant. And those individuals are the ones highest at risk for suicide. Fundamentally, the question is, what is basic research and why is it important to understanding how antidepressants act? So we were actually looking at BDNF, which is a growth factor, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is important. It's critical for how antidepressants act. And it's well known that activity can regulate BDNF expression, then having physiological impact. What we were able to show is that independent of activity, you could still regulate BDNF expression. Our group has long been interested in how neurons signal in the absence of neuronal impulses because synapses, these communication junctions between neurons actually have the machinery to signal without nerve impulses or what we call action potentials. Now in this study, we show that this type of regulation of gene transcription can occur independent of neuronal activity, in the absence of neuronal impulses. This just synaptic communication between neurons is sufficient to actually drive gene transcription in neurons. So providing a link between just baseline resting synaptic activity and gene transcription. So it's actually quite interesting and could have impact on really thinking about how therapeutic treatments like antidepressants work, as well as potentially the pathophysiology of some of these disorders. Our goal is that with a drug like ketamine, that it currently is showing effects in a number of patients that are treatment resistant, not all, but a number of them. And so by understanding the mechanism, less side effects, can we make it perhaps you know, safer? Can we in some way really work on perhaps extending the long-term effects? But also for those individuals that don't respond, can we start to have an understanding of why? So that ultimately we're gonna be able to provide hopefully safer, more effective and longer lasting treatments to individuals with depression, including those that are treatment resistant.